everyone this is Kyle with uh, K Debate. I wanted to talk about something that happened recently. Uh, at, it, it was the um, the Pope meeting with w with the county clerk from Kentucky. Uh, something interesting that when I first saw it, I was like, wait, what, what what's going on? Is this true? Because originally the Vatican said, you know, we would do not confirm nor deny. And the person said, well, yeah, it happened, and then people were saying, no, it didn't, and then there was a lot of outrage. Uh, and then about an hour later, because I was trying to figure it out as well, I was like, is this true? Is, is, is he lying? Is, is somebody mistaken? Uh, and then when it actually came that, yes, it's true, it's been, it's been verified, people are saying it actually happened. Um, because originally there was a lot of people saying it didn't happen, it was a lie. Uh, and I, I didn't know what was going on. I, I was trying to find more information on it, I couldn't at first. But when it finally came to light that it did happen, at first, and I will admit this, at first I was upset because I didn't understand what it meant. I was like, well, why is this happening? Why is he, why is he condoning her behavior? Why is he, why is he backtracking all these things? And I was reading uh, reading articles that were saying the same thing as well. He, he's completely, he's completely undermining everything. He's being a politician. He's being a liar. You know, why did they deny it? And all those things. And it took me, it took me a, about an hour to really think about it. And I wanted to make this a long time for this video as soon as I came up with this, but I waited a little while, thought about it a little bit longer. When, when you are, put the, put the Pope in, you know, take it from his perspective. What he has done and what he has always promoted was fairness, equality, understanding, compassion, caring, things like that. All, all of the things he has ever said, all the things he has ever tried to promote have been on the same line of reasoning. His belief system of what is true is this. So when he did meet with her, I don't know what was exactly talked about, I don't know what context it was put into, but he has said in the past that if you believe something, that you know, no law should be in, you know, you should be able to fight for your own belief. To deny the right to fight for your belief is oppression and is wrong. And a lot of people are using that in, in the context of uh, of that, the Kentucky um, clerk denying people the, the rights uh, of um, marriage, pretty much. So people are, are, because that's the dialogue we have right now. That's the dialogue we are talking about. But when, when you take that in the context of what the Pope has been saying for years, he has been saying the same thing for years, it's not that narrative. It is part of that narrative, saying she has the right to fight for her beliefs. That doesn't mean her beliefs are necessarily right, or that he condones her beliefs, or that he condones her actions, but, uh, I mean, agree with her beliefs or condones her actions. What it means is that we have a right, an inherent right as an individual, as a person, to fight for our rights. Now, if it turns out we are wrong, if it turns out that our actions are harmful or destructive or whatever, then that can be dealt with within you know, the, the moral response, the, the response of, you know, the fair response of whatever should come. And that's a very important dialogue to keep open. It's a very important concept to have in every society because if you deny a right because the society believes that something is wrong, then you are denying that that is a potential way to think. And so you are denying a potential thought process or a potential, you know, um, action or behavior or cultural change. And there's a lot of things that, in that same line, there are things that are bad, there are things that are really bad. Um, a society that, can, that condones, you know, rape and, or misogyny or murder or, you know, it, misogyny, yeah, whatever. And anything that people might consider bad. Um, is um, for a second I thought I said something else. <laughs> but anyway, um, I, I, it's very, very late. My brain wasn't working properly for a second. So anyway, what the, what the Pope was, was doing when he, when he talked to her sounded like he was trying to say, you are being, you know, you're fighting something. You are being attacked by a lot of people. You are a controversial person right now. You're in a controversial situation. 
you have the right to fight for your belief. You have the right to believe what you believe. Because persecution for having a belief system is wrong also. Now her behavior, you can argue for or against, and people have every single day uh, in the hundreds of thousands, if not millions. Um, so that's not what I'm trying to bring up. Whether she is right or wrong is completely besides the point of, of what that meeting means. All it is, is him meeting somebody who has been persecuted for her belief system, for having what she believes and behaving according to what she believes. So, well, it doesn't necessarily put a good light on it because it sounds to a lot of people like he's condoning her behavior. Meeting with somebody and saying you have the right to fight doesn't condone their actions necessarily, not in this context. It's a very, very odd, this is why it took me so long to come up with this, because it was like, at first I really just thought he was condoning her behavior. But when, when you look at the things that he's done in the past, where he, he's talked to every different kind of person, he's, he's talked with criminals, he's talked with the poor, he's talked with the rich, he's talked with the people of different religions, he's talked with people that were, you know, really, really bad. He, he's talked to everybody. So he doesn't necessarily condone their behavior, but he says that everyone has a right to fight for their belief system. Because without that right, you have this other group dictating what is right. So you have to have that dialogue. And that dialogue does not mean, it does not mean that every voice is right. It does not mean that every voice is being condoned, that their actions or their their, their message is condoned. What it means is that in that dialogue must be protected. It must be presented for everyone because that is how freedom and how fairness is created, is promoted, and is spread around. There is a very negative relationship between what she has done and our current narrative. So him talking to her sounds like he is taking her side, also because the Catholic Church is generally against gay marriage and generally against homosexuality in general. So people are like, oh, he's just another one of those popes again. He's, he's, he's backtracked all the way back. He's afraid of the church or whatever. Whatever people say, is, that is not necessarily the case. He might be much more conservative than people think. He might ha just have a really good PR team or whatever. Whatever the reason people love him, I, I like, I respect him. I don't love him. I respect him as a person. I love what he does most of the time. I, I, so when I see his actions, like, I see that man, or I see that person, or I see that, that whatever you want to call him, I see him doing good things. I respect that. I understand the hardships of doing those things. And I can see that it's not easy, especially when you're in, in a position where people know who you are or they, they, they put pressure on you to act a certain way to, because you want to please people. But when, when you're put into a position where talking to somebody who is unpopular and who, who respects him, she respects him greatly, uh, makes him the bad guy, and that's not how it works. Him giving her support, or him giving her a kind word or a gesture of good faith, does sound like it's condoning her behavior. But it's, it, it, I keep reiterating, that is not necessarily the case, and it should not be, it, first of all, it should not immediately be seen as that. I had that, I had that trouble, I, I admit 100%, when I first saw it, I was like, that sounds wrong. When, in, when I thought about it, and I was trying to think about it without doing a mental hurdle and just like, denying that it happened, or, you know, I was trying to find information on it. I was really trying to find it, and in my mind I was like, did this really happen? I don't know. They're not, except, they're not saying it happened, so does that mean it didn't happen? And that's the kind of thing in my head. A lot of people were doing the same thing, and then when they accepted it, when they said, yeah, it actually happened, people were like, well, they tried to hide it. That must mean that they're bad things. I don't know. I don't know why they did that, and I don't really think that's the important part of it. Uh, the, the people talking about it, there's a lot of stuff happening, and a lot of, really quickly, and there was, I don't know. I don't know why they did it, and 
honestly, at this point in time, I don't care. At that, that little nugget of information, I don't care. Because them hiding something that may or may not have had other things associated with it that I'm not aware of, I don't know. People don't say things for different reasons, and I don't know what their reasons were. I'm not going to immediately think that it's nefarious or nefarious, or whatever the word is. So, nefarious was the correct word. Um, when, when the Kentucky clerk said that the Pope talked to her and gave her words of encouragement, and that she was, whatever else, I don't know. I don't know exactly the context or what was actually said because there's no transcripts and there's nothing I could actually look up. There's just what she said was said and that's it. That's the only information I've gotten besides the confirmation that a conversation happened. So I'm trying not to get into that either because that, that's, that's from her perspective and perspectives generally are, you know, kind of, kind of what they, people hear what they want to hear sometimes. I've, I've, I'm the victim of that as well. So I want to understand what was said before I hear what people say about it, because then I'll be biased if I, if I do that. Like, if I hear what other people say it was said, I'll be biased. So I've been looking for that, I can't find anything. It's always what she said happened, or what the media said she said happened, and that's always confusing. Uh, the, all the headlines say Kim Davis was, was um, given complete, uh, complete agreement by with the Pope, or the Pope agrees with, with Kim Davis, or whatever, and it, it's all those, and I'm like, that's probably not what happened. I don't think that's what was said. I don't see any transcripts anywhere. I don't see anyone saying what was actually said. So I'm trying, I'm trying to find that out as well. So anyway, go, going back to the beginning of it. I have said several times in the past that I respect the Pope, and I, I believe what he's trying to do is a good thing, though I disagree with a lot of the things that he has said or done in, in the, the, the motivating area. It's like why he's doing it, and some of the things he's doing, I believe, are wrong, but that doesn't mean I don't respect him as a person because he's trying to do something that is very difficult, and his belief system is different than mine. His value system is different than mine. That is why we disagree. So uh, it's really hard to say that with like, I disagree with what Kim Davis is doing. I don't believe that the conversation that they had was a, uh, any kind of uh, affirmative, like saying what she's doing is right. I don't believe that it, it's the Pope sliding backwards or you know showing his other face or whatever you want to call it. He has not changed his stance. He has always been, you know, pro-Catholic Church, obviously. He's not, he is trying to make things more tolerant and more kind and more generous and more Jesus-like, if you want to use that terminology. But that's the exact thing that Jesus would do. He would meet with people of different opinions who have been, you know, hurt by other groups or condemned by other groups or just all of these different things. He, he met with the lepers, he met with the thieves, he met with the people that were being going to be killed because of the crimes they've committed and stuff like that. If if the Pope decided, I'm going to meet this person who is, who is Catholic and who has been suffering for whatever reason, even if it's, people can say it's her own fault, people can say that she deserves it, people can say anything. It doesn't matter. That is our narrative as a people. That is our opinions as a people. If he sees it differently, if he sees it as a persecuted woman who who needs a kind word and who can re can be helped by his words, I that I see that as his motivating factor. Whether that's true or not, I don't know. That's what I see it as. I'm trying to give him the benefit of the doubt because we don't know. None of us know. Nobody here on the internet knows why he did this. And I don't think anyone ever will. So when people argue, this is why he did it, I'm going to, you know, I'm, I hate him now, or I love him now, or, you know, uh, I hate this person, or I love this person, without any basis of information besides your own opinion, all you're doing is spreading misinformation. And I, you, anyone who's watched my videos know what I think about misinformation. 
don't do it. Don't spread your own opinion as fact. Don't say something is true when it's not. You don't know. I say, I think, maybe, I don't know. Say that. Say, it might be, it seems like this, it could be this. This is what happened. That's what I'm saying. There was a conversation. I think this might be why it happened. I think this might be what it means. That is what I am saying. If you are saying he did it because of this, if you're a conspiracy theorist and you think there is more going on, say that. Say, I'm a conspiracy theorist and I think this is what's happening. Say that. Don't say it's a fact. Don't say it's, this is the only way it could have been, this is the only thing, and you know what, I'm going to act on it. Don't say any of that stupid stuff. If you want to act on something that is not proven or is not factual in any way, then you should understand that it is not factual and that you should think about it more and that you should understand the actual facts before you start saying horrible things about people, especially when those actions or words hurt people. Think about it. There are people hurt because of the hate. If you hate David, if you hate the county clerk, and your hate hurts somebody, what are you saying about that? She hates these people and she hurt them. So I hate these people and hurt them or cause hurt to cause to be, to be pushed on them. That is what people are doing on both sides, every side. Everyone that does this, everyone that says, this is true, this is true, when it's not, that's what you're doing. Obviously, it's not always so explicit. It's not always clear that you're doing that. But what you're doing is you're riling people up, you're getting people angry, you're getting people more and more toxic, and then you just spread it, you throw up on everybody. Why do you do that? Why does everybody do that? I saw it today. It was released today. Kim Davis talked to the Pope. And then immediately there was a backlash of people attacking people. Why? Why does this happen? Why do you do that? This is the internet. It's always like this. It should... No, it should not be like this. It should be better than this. We have information. We have all the information. We ha when we don't have the information, we make stuff up. When we do have the information, we ignore it and listen to somebody who's louder or more more controversial or who's less controversial but better speaking don't do that look at the facts look at the information look at who's speaking and why they're saying it find the context find the reasoning understand it study it look at it think about it for more than 10 seconds i had to stop i was going down that road it was hey i don't like this this is against what i think is true i'm going to be mad at this no wait i have to stop what is going on this is me this is my mind i was confused I was getting angry. I wanted answers. So I looked for answers. I couldn't find one. What am I going to do? Oh, I'm going to type up whatever the heck I think is true. No, don't do that. I saw that. I saw it everywhere. I was trying to find answers. Couldn't find them. I found lies. I found a lot of them. I found people angry. I found people mad. I found people loving it. I saw people praising Jesus to, you know, destroy the world. I don't understand any of it. But what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to find the answers that I'm looking for. Those are not the answers I'm looking for because they're not true, okay? Simple, very simple. Find the truth. If you can't find the truth, look for it harder. If you can't find it even then, ask for help, find context, build on a foundation of truth, don't make stuff up. Don't listen to people that make stuff up. Find the context, okay? It's really hard sometimes, but it's also really good to get into the practice of looking anyway. Sometimes the easy things are not the best. And sometimes it is. I don't deny that. But there is a very important kind of mindset that you must maintain. If you are going to go and find information that links back to you only, this is, okay, this is the thing that makes me happy. No, no, no. You have to find the truth. The thing that makes you happy is not always the truth. So always find multiple sources from multiple different organizations with multiple backgrounds. Then you can find the truth. If you look for somebody that always agrees with you, generally, they're not going to be factual most of the time. What they're going to do is they're going to cater to your group. And when they cater to their group, what do they do? Cherry pick information. They're going to muddle the facts. They're going to look at the statistics, and they're only going to pick out their statistics that help to present to you. So what you're doing is you're compounding the ignorance. And that's all you're doing is you're, you're devouring this ignorance and then spewing it back onto people. And then all they're going to do is they're going to eat that up and spew it onto other people. That doesn't help anybody. Don't do that. Don't ever, ever, ever do that. It's really simple. So all of this stuff about the Pope and Kim Davis condoning the, the whatever, I don't know. There is no information on this. 
There is none. It is a blackout. It's the first day, okay? There is no information on it. There might be in the future. If there is, that would be awesome. I would like more context. I would love to have an explanation of what's going on. There hasn't been today. As of this video, I have been looking. There is no new information. So if it comes out after information comes out, please know that I made this video before that information comes out. If it doesn't come out, then I guess I didn't have to say that. But I wanted to be clear. I wanted to be concise. I wanted people to understand where I'm coming from. I am not angry at this. I was confused. I understood it at least to the point of what I am saying now. I have presented my case. I have presented my understanding. I might be wrong. Please leave a comment below explaining why, and that would be awesome. Take care, and peace.